Praise God. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I just got How many people believe there is a God? Let me just see your hand. Amen, amen. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. How many people believe there is a God? Good. The second question is different. How many believe in God? Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. I want you to, man, God is so, God, first of all, I want you to know God loves you. Amen. God loves you. Amen. And, and, and when you come in environment, God told me to tell you that what he wants to do is answer all your prayers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, so a part of us is praise, but then a part is making the adjustment. Amen. And the adjustment is in all the words that you'll hear, whether it's through preaching, praying, or the song. Amen. And I heard it today. I heard it today. CJ called this whole movement forward. I didn't really understand what it meant, but I, I just know traditionally he's a better decision maker. So I didn't question it. So I just said forward and we're going to figure out what forward means. Praise God. But I just got it today. I just got it today that all your dreams and your goals and everything that God has for you will only happen if you go forward no I just got it I just got it I just got it I just got it and I didn't even hear the word for what I heard was the secret to success is and I'm never going oh somebody you just you just missed your whole life about the chain you just missed it amen I just I heard it praise God I heard it I heard it I heard it I heard it so forward God's been saying that and it's been in my spirit, but it's still, it's still, it, it wasn't thick and rich. But I, I just was being obedient, forward, 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 forward. I was just being obedient to what God told CJ, forward, 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 forward. But then I just heard it and I heard it in her spirit and she says, I'm never going back. So God told me to tell you that you will never have and be and do what he wants you to do as long as we keep going Back to it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to, I'm, I'm thinking about my back right now. Amen. So let's just, everybody do their own back right now. Amen. Amen. Everybody do their own back. We might have some sections where we all have some of the same back. But I want you to decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus Christ what you're never going back to. Shh. No, 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 no. Listen to what I'm saying. You're praying that God will do this for you. God said, I already did it. But the reason why you don't have it is because you keep going back and it's forward. I'm not even trying to, I promise y'all, we're going to keep it simple today. God told me to tell you that everything you pray for, he's already answered it. It's just all that you pray for is forward and you don't have it because you keep going back. So God said, told me to tell you that he's not going to bless us later. He's already blessed us. But the blessings are in forward, and many of us keep going back. Many of us keep going back to those addictions. We keep going back to those bad habits. And God has said it's right there, but every time I put it right there, and you right here, you go. And so you keep going away from what I gave, because you keep going back. Amen. And watch this. I love the devil because the devil will allow a circumstance to happen and you'll go back and make an excuse because, well, they did this and they said that and this happened. It doesn't matter how you go back. The devil just wants you to go back. He doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you don't, it, your reason is not good enough. But his trick is, is, is the more I can keep you back, the more I can keep you from doing and being and having what God would have for you. So, so when I finally gave you confidence and you keep, you keep going, well, I don't know, well, I'm not clear, well, I'm not my father, my mother, and I'm, I got a divorce, and I got sick, and I don't know. You keep going back when he already told you who you were. Amen. And some of this stuff is sickening because it don't even have nothing to do with the devil. We keep going back on our own. And we already know what happened the last time we did it, and we keep going back to it. 
And so I want you to get in your spirit. I want you to get in your spirit. And I'm never going back. I heard her. I heard her. I heard the spirit through her. And I'm never going back. And what's crazy, before I got here, God told me to tell you that the only way you don't get it is if you quit. He told me to tell you. God said, listen to me. I, 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 was, uh, I was at Oakwood um, yes, this week, uh, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I spoke to the students. And as I was sitting there, I was just like, wow, this is crazy. This is crazy. I'm 53 years old. I'm back at Oakwood. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I remember coming here as an 18-year-old. And I just, I just look at that version of Eric Thomas versus the one that's Oakwood in 53. And, and people are like, man, God is doing this for you. And God is doing that for you. I said, yeah, but you don't get it. This has been over 30 years. The only reason I have it is because I didn't stop. The, the only reason I have this success is because when the enemy told me, like, bro, if I was you, I wouldn't even. Bro, it's taking you how long to get a degree? Bro, if I was you, I just quit. Bro, it's embarrassing at this point. Like, bro, you're supposed to do it in four, bro. You on six. Now you on eight. Now you on ten. Bro, if I was you, I just quit. I just give up. I wouldn't even do it if I was you. Like, at this point, even if you do it, it's going to be a scar on you because it took you so long. I said, well, Satan, well, since I just might as well go ahead and do it since it's taking so long. I might as well do something with the time. And then I'll never forget when they gave me the, they gave me a, they gave me money to go get my master. They gave me money and they paid me to go. And the devil told me a master's, you know, may I remind you that, that this ain't no, this ain't no four year degree, son. This ain't, you ain't about to be sitting here and doing no multiple choice. You know you're going to be doing a lot of reading, research, and writing. May I remind you, you can't read? A master's degree? Have you lost your mind? I have. I have. I've lost that old mind. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Yep, you're absolutely right. I lost my mind, and I'm just going to believe God told me to go and get this. And I just believe that the right the right person or persons are going to pour into me and the right people are going to help me to, to, to finally understand stuff. Finally, it's going to click. And then once we, I never forget, uh, I love it. I, we, it was like a Christmas holiday, CJ and all, it was a bunch of students in my office and they had this little book with like the 3D boy and it was crazy because all the kids was taking the 3D books and they was doing their little thing and they was like, yo, that's a boat and that's a plane and that's a whatever and that's a this and that's a that. And I couldn't see, I couldn't for, for the life of me. I just saw a piece of paper with some 3D images and it was embarrassing. <laughs> Everybody was saying, you know how people are. People are rude and cruel. Right? You don't see that? You, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> and I forget, CJ was like, E, do me a favor, bro. Just get the book, put it on your nose. I'm like, on my nose? He's like, yeah, put it on your nose. And just pull back slowly. And I did it once, like, ah, oh, this is crazy. I still can't see it. No, he's like, go slow. I'm like, I'm going slow, because I'm slow. <laughs> And I remember like that third or fourth time I did it and I pulled back and I was like, yo, that's Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. I could see it. Whoa. And then I remember when I got the master's degree and I was going for the PhD and the devil was like, now nah, come on. Now you got to write a dissertation, bro. Like you can't, you, bro, this different. Bro, just quit. Just give up, bro. You know you ain't smart enough for that. And I said, I know I'm not, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. He told me to do it. So I, so I want to tell y'all, as I was driving here, God told me that the only reason I'm standing here is because I didn't quit. I didn't give up. And the devil knows that the only way he can beat you is to make you stop and to make you quit and to make you lose hope and to make you lose faith. He can't stop you, but he can make you stop you. And so I just want to say to you that whatever God told you to do, amen, we're going to do it. Now, I, I, God love y'all so much. I, I literally listened to Candace and I turned my message in about three weeks ago to Nick and I had a dope message and I got in here. He said, don't use that. And I was like, okay, God, but you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to deal with them. They, you know what I'm saying? That ain't on me. He said, don't, uh-uh, bump that. This I, is where I need you to go. As a matter of fact, Oakwood, you couldn't show it yesterday because you thought it was for them, but it was actually for y'all. 
So they computer, it, they couldn't show it, but God told me to show it to y'all. We ready? We ready? We ready? We ready? We ready? All right. So, so just being honest, I'm going to get into the word. Just being, I'm never going what? Talk back to me. I'm never going what? Raise your hand if you know what your back is. Raise your hand. Look, make a, make a commitment today. I don't even have to preach. If you stop going back, if I stop going back, I'm just being real. If you stop going back, if I stop going back, if, if when stuff get hard, you stop going back. When your wife get on your nerve, you go back. When your husband get on your nerve, you go back. When the kids go, when you fail, you go back. When, when you take like a, a loss, you go back. I'm just telling you, if you can stop going back and if you can stop making excuses for why you go back. Listen to me, this is between you and God. This ain't between no human. So, so if you're going back, you're going back on God. You ain't going back on no human. She made, I can't believe she said that. She made me go back. No, 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 no. You made you go back. You didn't get enough for back. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. I'm just praying that we would get enough for back. The, the, the enemy convinced us to do some dumb stuff, and I hate him because you do the dumb stuff he tell you to do, and then he expose you when you do the dumb stuff, and then he tear you down when you do the dumb stuff, then he go to God and say, nah, nah, when you do the dumb stuff, and then we still go back and do the dumb stuff. Knowing that he seeks to kill, steal, and come on, we know he's, he, that's all, he just want to take us out. And we have a God that loves us. So I want to show you something real quick. I want to show you something real quick. God said, please make it simple today. You know, I, I was at Oakwood and I was standing there and I saw some of my homeboys. And um, I was just like, God, why? It's not fair. It's like, why did you do this for me? Like, like my boy, he, he was the one that brought me into church and he ain't here. Like, this, this life not fair, God. You didn't bless my man. My wife and I was driving today. We was like, yo, abs this is no absolute. I promise you. Like, my wife was like, she grew up with her mom. Uh, her mom wasn't married. Well, I grew up, I, how I grew up, like, marriage wasn't a thing like that. And we both was like, yo, it's only the grace of God. We just got to be real. We like, we ain't come from that. <laughs> We're like, we don't even know how this happened. This was just God's mercy and God's grace. And I look at my career and I'm just like, this is just God's mercy. This is God's grace. And he said, don't do that, son. Don't do that. I need you to see that although I have blessed you, son, there were some decisions you made. Right? And I got to be, I got to be clear. I want to make sure I'm clear. I, you, man, you're going to love this. I actually made the decision in sin. Oh, y'all missed what I said. Amen. Like, I'm about, you, you, after this message, you're not going to be off, like, you ain't going to have no more excuses. You're not going to be able to try to make Eric Thomas in something that he's not. I'm being honest with you. Like, it's crazy. I actually just made a decision that I was never going back. That was my thing with God. I was like, yo, God, here's what we're going to do, right? Because the way I was born, the way I was brought up, I ain't prayed. Like, my mama wasn't praying. Like, y'all, like, you got mama, my mama prayed for me. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I don't even know my mom praying for me right now like I don't even know if she know how to pray like that I'm just being real she just not getting in the church and I just kind of figured out I don't think my mom is like interceding on my behalf I don't think my mom interceding on my kids behalf like, for real my mom we don't never have no conversations about open up the bible I read this let's go through it I don't have that I'm like God how did I get here he said because you made some decisions and I'm going to tell y'all what I did. This is crazy. I look back. I was at Oakwood like, God, how did I get here? He said, you made some decisions. Although you were a sinner, you made a decision that when I showed you it was sin, you made up in your mind you weren't going to keep going back to it. Hey Amen. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. This ain't no trick. This ain't no trick. What God showed me is oftentimes there's something that the devil does to us and we do it. And even though it don't feel good, we keep doing it. And there were some key mistakes I made, but I told God, like, yo, God, I promise you if, you, if you, if you get in me and through me, I promise you, if you do it, I can't do it, but if you do it through me, I'll never, I, listen to me, I don't personally ever want to do that again. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. The reason why you keep going back is because your taste buds is still for it. You still have a taste for it. You still have a desire for it. Although you're not currently doing it, you still think about it. You still crave it. And you got to give your cravings to God. 
And I just want to help you. I, I was at Oakwood yesterday and I was like, God, how did this happen, God? How did you do this for me? And he said, okay, I'm going to walk you through it because you need to walk them through it. Listen to me very closely. I'm not claiming perfection. I'm far from it even today as I stand among you. But I'm telling you, I was talking to my son and my son had this hiccup. And I told my son, like, son, bro, I'm just trying to tell you. Next time, you better do this and you better do this and you better do that. And he had his daddy's spear. He said, dad, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Don't talk to me about that. That was a mistake I made and I'll never make that by the grace of God ever again. I was like, oh, talk that talk, son. Talk that talk. Talk that talk. Talk that talk. The devil may get us, but, but, but we can't keep going back. We can't keep, we can't keep listening. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking, you can't, you can't keep craving it. You can't keep desiring it. You can't keep wanting and say, God, take it away from me. He said, I can't because you desire it. I can't. I can't. I can't because you crave it. I can't because you're thinking about it. I can't. I can't because you got it under the tuck just in case something don't happen. You can go back to it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, even though you asked me to, I can't because you really don't mean it. And I'm just saying today, you're about to go to a whole nother level in your imperfection. <laughs> That's the thing I love about preaching. Like, I ain't even perfect, amen. And yet, whatever I touch, turn to gold. Whatever I put my hands on, the Lord bless. Wherever I place my feet is blessed. Why? Not because I'm perfect, but I have decided, God, I want to hate sin the way you hate sin. There was a time I hated the consequences, but not the sin itself. I'm talking to somebody. I'm going to help somebody. And we all ain't going to be playing church. Somebody going to keep it 1,000 with me. <laughs> huh? Huh? And there was a time where I, I, just, I, I just was upset with the consequences. I was just hurt. I got caught. Huh? I, just, I was just hurt that they took the, the video games from me. I was hurt. I, I, I wasn't about to go to school and change my grades. I was just hurt I couldn't go outside. I, I, wasn't going, I wasn't going to change my grade. I wasn't about to start reading. I wasn't about to start studying. I, I, just, I was hurt because of the consequence. I was hurt because I embarrassed my mother, but I wasn't hurt about sin itself. Hey, man, then I got to the point where I was like, oh, say, I see what you on, bro. You a dog, bro. I see what you on, bro. You, you for the kill. You trying to take anything that's good in my life. Anything that's a blessing in my life, you trying to take it. Anything that God has given me, you want it. You selfish. You, you, you envious. You jealous of my relationship with God. You jealous. You hurt that I'm getting up in the morning and praying. You hurt that he hears me and he's listening to me. You, you hurt that you had this chance and you blew it. Now you try misery loves company. Well, I'm, I'm done, bro. I'm done, bro. Because every time I mess with you, you try to destroy every sin. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm through. God, I want to be on your side, but I need you to. I'm telling you today, some of us, you say you want to get to the next level, but you in love with going back. You addicted to back. And God's saying, look, that's one thing I'm not going to do. I'm a jealous God, but I ain't, I'm not going to take your will from you. It looked like you must enjoy it. Amen. So I'm going to walk you through the word. The first thing I want you to know is that you have to stop going back. 75% the, the of your success is going to come from not going back. As I stood in Oakwood College Church yesterday, 18 years old, couldn't read or write, I stood there yesterday, not with a PhD, but I stood there yesterday really knowing how to read and write. Like really knowing how to sound out words. My girl Aphia was like, you can't, you don't say my name because you can't say it. I said, I can say it. I sent her, I, A, <laughs> F-I-A, <laughs> Aphia. I, I had to work hard on this syllable boy. <laughs> I didn't understand syllables back in the day. I, I stood there like, yo, I can say words. I understand words. My critical thinking skills is the bomb. I got this thing. I got it. I got at 18 when I came here. Not only did I not have it, I was faking it like I had it. I'm trying to tell you today, number two, most of us will never get to the next level. Not only do we keep going back, we keep faking stuff that we shouldn't be fake. I was trying to fake it like I could read or write because I was surrounded with people who could read or write. And I always felt embarrassed because I wasn't on a level. So instead of just saying I couldn't read and write and let the people who could read and write help me read and write. 
So Trofer was the first person I admitted to I couldn't read or write. So he got me the book, The Pro uh, Pilgrim's Progress. And I remember the first word he tried to help me to read that it was tough, obstinate. <laughs> that was our way. He, Ab. I'm like, bro, I heard you. He tried to embarrass me. <laughs> I'm talking about we read that book and we read that book and we read that book and I start breaking the syllables down and I'm telling you, I went in at 18 years old, hurt, bruised, battered. I went to Oakwood at 53, able to turn that school around. I went in there and said, yep, I see exactly what's going on. Put me in the game, coach. Help me to save the school that once blessed my soul. I got resources now. I know people now. I can turn this thing around. I went in broken. but I went back whole. Listen to what I'm telling you. I told you I was 18 years old. I'm 53. It took some time. God told me to tell you there's a group of you. You give up. You give in. You give up and you give in because you have your own expectations and your own timeline. God told me to tell you, you don't even have a problem with the process. People say, trust the process. Trust the process. You don't have a problem with the process. You ain't tripping on the process. You tripping on God's timeline versus your timeline. You ain't scared to work. You just, you just, you just, God said it's going to take another six months and you thought by now it'd be. And so now the devil is discouraging you on time. Look how long God is taking. Look at what God is doing. What's going on with you? Why is it taking you 12 years to get a four year degree? Because God's cooking up something. <laughs> oh, come on. Somebody talk back to me. Hey man, I tell people now nah, you try to take chicken. I say, I can't even eat chicken no more. I can't eat fried chicken. These young folk, they cook fried chicken like the same day. They go get it, clean it, put it in the bag, and they throw it right in the grease. I'm like, where they do that at? My grandma had a three-day process with the buttermilk. <laughs> she had the buttermilk, put the se buttermilk first, let it sit for a day or two, and then put the seasonings on it at the, with the, but the buttermilk all inside. We used to eat this back in the day. I don't know if y'all remember. We used to eat the chicken. I'm talking about the meat, the bones. The we had that whole joke. It was seasoned through and through. 2023, the skin is the only thing. The meat ain't even got no taste to it. I'm like, boo, take that back. Oh, you about to make me gain weight. I ain't even supposed to be eating this. This is sin. It don't even taste good. Get, bring back the buttermilk. But no, the buttermilk was before microwave. And I'm not talking about the microwave. I'm talking about the microwave mentality. The buttermilk was a prop. And so my grandma took her time. And I'm telling you, the problem right now is not the process. They used to say, it's the process. It's not. I see what's wrong with you. You have a timeline, and when God doesn't meet your timeline, then that's when you start having mental and emotional challenges. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Most of y'all in this room, you ain't got, you're not clinically something wrong. You know what I'm saying? The doctor hadn't told you something wrong. And everybody telling you depressed. Depression is when you and God are not in alignment, it'll drive anybody crazy. When you're not doing what you was called to do, when you're not doing what you were purposed to do, when you're not walking in your it, when you're not walking in your je ne sais quoi. Anybody gonna go crazy when you working somewhere you ain't supposed to be working? When you somewhere at 40 hours you ain't supposed to be? When you're not accomplishing what you're supposed to accomplish, so where the devil has gotten most of you is yes, you believe God, but you don't believe in God. Yeah, you believe he exists, but when he tells you something, your ambition is dry. There's another group God told me your ambition is taking you away from the will of God. You buying stuff not because it's the will of God, you buying it because you're trying to prove stuff to people. You got yourself in the debt. So let's go, let's go. I want to show you, he told me to show you this, the earthly stuff to show you the success. For I know the plans that I have for you. For I know the plans that I have for you. For I know the plans that I have for you. I'm just going to be honest. Every part of my life, the parts that I'm super successful in are the ones that I know what the plan is and I stick with the plan. The ones where I know the plan, but I don't stick with the plan. <laughs> I don't have the same results as the one I know the plan. My marriage is like, I always say, my marriage is messing up my life. It's just, that's why, because that's like the apex for me. Like that's where I start. 
So the other day, my wife wanted to go to Cleveland, and she was like, look, uh, I, you know, it's on Monday. And I was like, bet. Well, if it's Monday or whatever, we'll just get up Monday and go. And she's like, no, I want to go Sunday. Like, I want to I be in position. I don't want no accidents. I don't want nothing to stop. I got something I need to do, and I need to. And it's so funny, Dave. I was like, bro, we could go on Monday. Now, I didn't say it out loud, but she saw my spirit. Like, I could, we can go. <laughs> she felt, she said Sunday, and I didn't go, yay, Sunday. I'm just being real. I was running my own play. Sunday is NFL. <laughs> I was running my own play. I'm like, the Lions finally winning, and you want to go, you want to leave. <laughs> we ain't won in 70 years. We finally winning, and we, I got to go. <laughs> How ironic. I got to be gone. I only have one day. And as I began to say that, my pilot wife says out loud, I've been traveling with you for you all this time, all these years, and you can't get, you can't, I was like, up, oh, let's get, get the car, let's get the car, get the car, start that joke up, let's fill that joke up with gas, let go. <laughs> she said, bro, we talking about the last 20, 30 years, you was broke. I was the first one with the job, you was broke. First house, I couldn't even put your name on there. Your credit was so bad. It's gonna mess up. I couldn't even take your last name in marriage because your credit was so bad. I had to keep my name just to preserve. I was the first one with a job. I was the first one with health benefits. I carried you, and now you talking about you can't, you looking at me. I said, I'll take you to Cleveland right now. Just get, say the word, let's go. God says, son, you're deviating from the plan. Nobody said a happy team, a happy life. It's not the plan. It's a happy wife. Happy. I love it. Didi always say, look, now you told me when we was dating and teenage, you climbed the mountain for me. I don't need you to climb the mountain. I need you to drive me to Cleveland. <laughs> We, you ain't even got to climb no mountains. <laughs> you just get in the car and take me to Cleveland. So I'm going to walk you through it. I just want to show you. After today, we're going to have success. Why? Because we're going to follow the plan. We're going to follow the what? Plan. Watch what it says. Because the plan is going to prosper you. So the reason many of us aren't prospering is because we're not going with the plan. You done made up your own plan. So some of you don't want to do nothing God tells you to do. Some of you want to do some of what God tells you to do. But when it don't look right, you want to you take over. I suggest you not take over, even though it look crazy. Follow the GPS. Not to harm you. Most of us, we've been harmed. On, doing our own crazy, dumb stuff. Plans to give you hope in the future, meaning forwards. Future, forwards. Okay, let me just be honest. How many of y'all wake up and oftentimes something that happened in the past, you still be thinking about it in the present. Just be honest, past, uh, stop. Just stop from now on, don't do that. That's not a part of the plan. Nothing about this says, and I will give you hope uh, and go backwards. I will give you a hope and a past. It says future. So watch this, let's go. Let's go to the first one. Y'all made me change my whole, my whole, my whole. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He had one desire, and that was to make the Chicago Bulls a franchise like Boston, like the Lakers. That was his only dream, to win multiple championships so he could put Chicago Bulls on the map like the Lakers, like Boston. He just wanted Chicago to be an ultimate franchise. Let me tell you something. The first six, seven years of his career, he killed a game, but he didn't win one championship. There's one thing we can learn from Michael Jordan is that he needed a coach and he needed to be coachable. I'm talking to somebody today, you, 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 you MJ, we know you MJ. You were born in his image, we know you MJ. We know you got it going on, we, we do. You, you were born in his image. God, you, you, God, when God made you, he didn't make enough. We know you got it going on. The problem is you ain't coachable. You deep, you dope, you can put up points. Mike was putting up 60-some points, wasn't winning no championships, wasn't winning no playoff game. Mike was, put, Mike was putting up points, Mike was winning scoring titles, Mike had the shoe contract, Mike had Gatorade, they had a song to be like Mike. But Mike didn't get what he wanted because Mike wasn't coachable. God told me to tell you, some of you, some of you in this room, you're not coachable. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. When, when, when Phil Jackson came, he said, here's what I'm going to need you to do. I'm going to need you to do me a huge favor. I'm going to need you to stop doing what you was doing and do what I tell you to do. Come on, I want y'all to watch it. Mike was used to putting up 60. He said, look, we're doing the complete opposite. We taking the ball out your hand. You used to having it in your hand, we taking it out your hand. Why? Because somewhere in your brain, you think if the ball is in your hand, you're gonna win a championship. You've done that for the last six years and you still haven't won a championship. I'm talking to somebody. God told me to tell you, you've been doing it your way and it's not working, but you keep doing it your way because you married to you. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the next one. I just want to show you what happens when, for I know the plans that I have. Six championships, net worth three billion. I, I can see the sign too. You can put it down. I'm good. Three bit. He followed the blueprint. He followed coachable. He followed coach. Next one. I just want to show y'all. I just want to show you, they, they follow daddy. They follow daddy. They, they asked Venus in the interview, you know, you, you're number one in the world. You know, how, how you think you're going to be nothing. And you think, and they kept, and the father just jumped up. She told you, she said what she said. Leave the child alone. How, you hear what I'm telling you? Follow daddy. And when the enemy getting on, God will get up. You ain't got, some of y'all talking back to the devil. You're trying to read the devil his rights. Stay in your place. That's a spirit. You, you can't handle a spirit. Y'all watching people on TV talking about spirits and demons and you gonna cat. You bet not cat. When we were bell tower, now I'm talking about Trey, Irv was casting out demons. I was like, y'all go ahead and knock yourself. I'll see y'all when it's time to pray. I mean, I ain't, I'm not Ghostbuster at this point in my life. I'm good on that. I wasn't like, oh, they casting out demons. I want some. I'm like, y'all go right ahead. I read the Bible about how that go down. Y'all go right ahead and do that. And it wasn't until God told me, are you listening to what I'm saying? I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. When you follow daddy, the younger you follow daddy, the easier it is. Some of y'all is going to be tough because you grown now and you still ain't fine. And that's why Satan takes daddies out of our lives. So when we go our father, it's we clueless. When we go our father, we ain't got no trust. When we go our father, there's no alignment. When we go our father. I paid attention to people who had their daddy in their life and had a healthy relationship. It's usually not as traumatic. They usually listen more. It's just different. Me and C, he was to get into it. It was the craziest thing. Me and C would get into it, and he'd be like, all right, E, let's go get lunch. I said, lunch? I'm mad at you. <laughs> we beefing. <laughs> we can't talk at least to tomorrow. <laughs> I get up and pray at three, then I can talk to you. He said, well, why we got to be mad at each other? Because we don't agree. Well, because I didn't have my father in my life. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Because I didn't have my daddy in my life. I didn't know how to deal with con the shh, 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 make sure you go watch it. Richard stood up and said, don't talk to my babies. Don't tell them how, don't tell them they limit it. Shh, okay, I want to tell you something real quick. This is why you need to get in your word. This is why you need to be in church. This is why you need to be praying. This is why you need to be careful what you're watching on the internet. This is why we need to be careful because he did not allow his babies to play with nobody else. He trained them by themselves. He did not want them to get influence or he did not want anybody else to influence his babies. So he trained his babies and then when they was ready, they start whipping, they whipping folks butt. They killing them, hunted by, they hunted. No woman is ever hunted by, got them. Hunt, Serena, 120, got them. Serena's not even supposed to be playing tennis. The, have you seen her body frame? That is not a tennis body. You ain't never seen a body like, and none of them. They don't, don't nobody look like, nobody got that height, nobody got that, nobody. And she ain't even had no business running up. She shouldn't even be able to run the court. Most of them tall like her sister, thin. 
They can run out. She shouldn't. She carrying a lot. She going back and forth and back and forth and still number one in the world without looking like none of them, none of, not playing like none of them, not trained by none of them. Why? Because she listened to daddy and did what daddy told her to do and she became the best in the world. Let's go to the next slide. I'm sorry. I don't forgot how much they, oh, yep, there we go. 95 million, 290 million. I want you to see even your money different when you listen to daddy. Your money different when you do what daddy tell you to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own, but in all thy ways. Listen to daddy. Follow daddy. You got a job. You know you ain't got no business there, but you let somebody tell you you got rent to pay. When he already told you, if I take care of the lilies of the field and they do not toil or they ain't struggling or they ain't broke, I, if I take care of the birds, of, uh, the birds singing every morning, if I take care of them, I'm gonna, didn't nobody tell you to take care of yourself? I told you to be obedient to me. You run around here with a job, you broke because you got a job because you don't have a calling. When you got a call and it just flow, you ain't even got to work on it. I Oakwood, three speeds at Oakwood. We got up at three o'clock this morning, got on a five o'clock flight, landed eight o'clock, drove straight here, did a podcast. Now I'm preaching. Now we got a mastermind after. Why? When you in your calling, it just flow. When you listen to other folk other than your daddy, it, it, it demotivates you. It drains you. It sucks the energy out of you. When you dating somebody that daddy did not approve, it drains you. It sucks your bank account. It sucks your mental and emotional strength. You wake up and don't want to get up. You depressed and you were never depressed. Why? Because you chose someone other than what God. God told you to choose from the spirit. You didn't chose from the flesh. I won't just, I just won't look at him. <laughs> They, for years, when they got to the, to the what, I don't, if it was the Wimbledon, if it was the, the Open, they played each other. Because they listened to daddy. And daddy was their coach. And I'm going to tell you something. Serena started struggling in tennis for a while. She went a long time before she could win another one. And I want to tell y'all what happened. If you go back and look, her mother and father got a divorce. And her father stopped coming to the tennis matches. And somebody else became her coach. <laughs> no, no, you missed what I said. With all that talent, with all those wins she had already had, when she got a different coach, she didn't get the different out. She got different outcomes. But when daddy was there, <laughs> I want y'all to go back. She used to be like, bah. Daddy like, I see you. She like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, but when daddy wasn't there no more, it was a different Serena. Shh. I don't care if you good, great. I don't care if you in the worst place you've ever been. You keep listening to daddy. I don't care if you feel lost. I don't care if your bank account, I don't care what's going on in your life. You keep listening to daddy. Let's go. I just want to show you real quick. I'm sorry. I know, don't, 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 don't. We got, yeah, I just want, I just want to show you real quick. I just want to show you real quick. He got his daddy. He like 51 and 0. He got his daddy. He can't stand his daddy. <laughs> he can't stand his daddy. All he talk about is a big yap, 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 yap. He always yapping about his daddy. But he 51 and 0. He listened to his daddy. His daddy said, don't nobody know my son like I know my son. Can't nobody move the way I make my son move. Can't nobody make my son think the way I think. Can't nobody beat my son. He's the greatest. Listen to daddy. Daddy knows you. You listen to other folk talk about you ugly. You listen to other folk talk about you insufficient. You listen. Stop listening to people who were created by God and listen to God himself tell you what he wanted to. Get them people out your ear. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. He's worth 400 million. Can you see the correlation? Can you see the co Am I making it simple? 
Let's go to the next one. I've been listening to my daddy. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desire. Shannon, that's the one you gave me back in the day. He shall give me the desires. Desires ain't laws. Desires ain't statues. Desires ain't what God wants for you. Desires is what you want for you. He said, when you listen to me and my, your ways please me, I will give you stuff you don't even need. Somebody said, you got two Escalades? I said, yeah. They said, why? I said, because, man, when I'm in Michigan, I love the way it dry, so I just bought one for California. Daddy said, what do you want? I said, I want two Escalades. He said, go get it. Commit your, commit. We're leaving. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to, and he shall, and he might, and he going to think about it, and there's a possibility, and he shall bring, what do I got to do? Delight myself in him, commit to him, trust in him, and when I do that for him, he's going to do, let's go to the next one. Oh, my, 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 I delight myself in the Lord. God gave me something called the extreme execution flight assessment. I took it to Baylor. Baylor said, thank you for helping out. This is just the desires of my heart. I love sports. I want to be in sports. And thank you for helping our team achieve the first Big Ten championship in Baylor history. The first conference championship in 71 years. The first national championship ever. Keep inspiring, motivating, leading people, and most of all, making a difference in their spiritual journey. Just be yourself. Go to the next slide, and this is what's going to happen. I, the desires of your heart. I got the ring. I got nets at the crib. Hallelujah. I just want to show you the desires of your heart. Let's go to the next one. The desires of your heart. Trust in the Lord with most of your heart. Uh, with a portion of it. <laughs> with a piece of it. Uh, with the majority of it. With all your heart and lean not until when we leave today, do what daddy tell you to do, just like daddy tell you to do it. And if you ask the question, Eric, where do I start? Do the last thing God told you to do that you didn't, that you didn't do. So I want to help you out. You're like, where do I start? Whatever the last thing daddy told you to do that you didn't do, go back and do that. Go finish that. Complete that. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there. Lean not into your own, but in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. This is a command. Let's go to the next one. Come on, come on, come on. Thank you for being a part of helping us achieve the first NBA championship in the Denver Nuggets 47-year history. You helped us set the tone for our He going to give you the desires of your heart. Oh, next slide. He going to give you the desires of your heart. Next slide. He going to give you the desires of your heart. It just so happened. I just so happened to work with Denver, and it just so happened they won a championship. All your heart. It just so happened I worked with Bailey. And it just so happened. It's so hard for you because you're trying to do it. It's so difficult because you're trying to do it on your own. It's so hard because you're not letting daddy lead you. I think that's it. Let's go to the next one. Is that it? Harken now. <laughs> when do I start? <laughs> Harken now. No opportunity wasted. Harken now unto the voice of the Lord, and I will give thee counsel. And God shall be with you that wherever you place your foot on your marriage, it will be blessed. Wherever you place your foot on your bank account, it will be blessed. Wherever you place your foot on your gift, it's going to be blessed. Wherever you put your foot on your business, it's going to be blessed. Wherever you put your foot on your children, your babies, it's going to be blessed. I'm by myself. I thought I would get some hallelujah. I thought I'd get some praise. I said when you put daddy first and do what daddy tell you to do, wherever you put your foot, wherever you lay your head, wherever you go, it's going to be anointed. It's going to be blessed. Why? Because my daddy don't lose. It's going to be blessed. Why? Because my God is great. Amen. It's going to be great. Why? Because he's the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He don't fail. When you are in Christ, all you do is win. No matter what. I'm going to say it again. All you do in Christ is win, win, win. Uh, 
Win, win, win. I wish I could get a win. Win, that's all you do. Win, win, win. And then you start touching stuff that ain't even your stuff. God bring you CJ and this thing just blow up. Toby, you just touch, just bless, it's just, God just bless everything we touch. It God just bless. I think that was the last one. Is that the last one? Let's get ready. Is that the last one? It changed my whole message. Okay, I ain't seeing no movement, so that's it. So hearken now. You're out there, maybe you didn't have your daddy in your life or you had a rough childhood or your daddy didn't love you the way he was supposed to love you. I don't know what happened. Forget about it. Now you accept coaching from the Most High God. You want to be coached by the Most High God. That's your desire. You're coming right now. You got, got to, I'm tired. My way has not worked. It is not working. I don't see it working in the near future. Come right now. I'm ready to be coached by you, Lord. I'm ready to be coached by you, God. I'm ready. I'm done. I'm done running my life. I'm done. I'm done running my life. I'm done. It's not working. I'm done. It's not happening in the way I want to. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Let's, can we go back to Richard Williams? I just want his picture up. I'm done. I just want daddy to take over from now on. I'm done. For real. I tried it on my own. I know I'm gifted. I'm talented. I, I, I tried it on my own. I did. I gave it a shot. For real, the last 10 years, I, I, resumes, <laughs> medication, counseling, I gave it all I could possibly give. Relationships, this man, that man, this woman, that woman, this job, that job, press, 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 press. Come on, get close, press. I did, I did it all. I, 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 congratulations, <laughs> congratulations, you did it all. Now I want you to get all your self ambition out the way. I want you to get all, I ain't make it to the league and I got to prove myself. My son said to me the other day, dad, I'm going to prove. I said, you're going to prove what and to who? I already know who you are. You can't prove nothing to me. I knew you before you knew who you were. You can't prove nothing to God. And you darn simply don't need to be trying to prove nothing to no humans. It's time now just to fall and just rest and God and just move forward and get everything. Your health has been screwed up mentally, emotionally, physically. You diseased because of all that stress. Come on, come on, come on, five. Come on, y'all. This is it now. We switched the whole message up. God switched the whole thing up for you, four. You had Brandon and scrambling in the back. I promise I'd never do that again. I had to do it because of you. You better get this word. You better get this word in your spirit. Three, God is calling you. I want you to decide. As we're waiting for them to come, I want you to decide, as Mignon said, what's your VIP time with God? Decide right now. What's your VIP? Is it 7 a.m.? Is it 10.30 p.m.? Uh, is it uh, 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 10 a.m.? What's your VIP? Decide right now. What's your VIP? You and God right now, y'all say it. What's your VIP time with God? Where you're not going to let nobody interrupt it. Number two, you're coming to, come, come, come quick. Number two, you're saying, God, give me the plan. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, both got the triangle offense. Ask God, what's, your, what's the system for you? I want you to just ask God to give you 10 scriptures to live by. 10 scriptures, you're gonna get up every day and you're gonna look at those scriptures and you're gonna live by those scriptures. Hallelujah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, one, 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 you're coming. Come on, one, you're coming. Number three, I need you to do me a huge favor. The last one is, I, I don't want you to give up or give in. I want you to get rid of this time clock. I want you to stop saying you're behind because that just means you're comparing yourself to somebody else. You don't know God's time frame. Come on, y'all, I'm being honest. It took me 12 years to get a, 12 years to get a four-year degree. And when I went back to Oakwood, it makes sense now. He was soaking the meat. <laughs> he is throwing seasoning on it. He was letting it cook slow, like on 250. <laughs> the oven was barely on. That joke was on 250. Are we there yet? Is it done yet? Lord, how long is it going to take? He said, hold up, wait. Don't touch, get out the kitchen. Don't touch the oven. Stay out, leave it alone. But I'm going to open it up. And when I open it up, you're going to put videos up and you're going to change the world. It's going to take me a little longer because I'm doing a little bit more. 
It's going to take a little longer because I'm putting more anointing in. It's going to take a little longer, son, because you're going to make reach the world. It's going to take a little longer, but just wait. Hold up. Get out the kitchen. Leave the oven alone. Don't touch it. I'll call you when it's ready. You'll know when it's done. You'll know when it's done. Stop comparing yourself. Get off the internet. Get in the Bible. What does God say about me? What does God believe about me? What does God want me to do? Forget the past. It's over. So what? You didn't do what you're supposed to do. Today is a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We ain't worried about yesterday. We ain't worried about last year. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So what? You didn't do what you're supposed to do. He going to work that out for his good. That's going to turn around for your favor. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody about to get blessed. Somebody about to get blessed big. God's about to turn it. He's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Oh, I wish I could sing. He going to turn it around. He going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. It's going to be all right. God's going to bring you through. You're going to get on the other side. Everything you prayed for, you're going to get in the presence of your enemy, in the presence of your wife, in the presence of your kids, in the presence of your peers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's going to, he's going to bless you. You got to believe. You got to believe. When you leave here, believe. Believe. Dion changing the whole world. He's saying, believe. He's saying believe. His boy got 16 touchdowns. He said believe. His boy making 4.1 million. Somebody say, what's going on with Colorado? They already won. His son making 4.1. They already won. His other son playing too. He, he making million. They already won. They got a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial as a family. They already won. It ain't about football. They already won. He don't need to win no more games. They already won. They only won one last year. He already had three. They already won. You already won. Stop acting like you got to win. You already won. It's already done. You just got to walk in it. You already won. You already a victor. You already won. You already got it going on. You already dope. You just got to walk in it now. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. For there is no other name whereby men and women might be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. Honestly, we have screwed it up royally. In the name of Jesus, we have screwed up royally, Father. I admit it. We've taken the very thing that you've given us and we've destroyed it. We've wasted it. We have not been good stewards. We confess. But do a new thing, Father. Do a new thing, Father. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Father. You said if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves. We humble ourselves before you. We did it. We know we did it, Lord. Help us. For we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. There is no goodness in us, Father. On our best day, we are sinners. Paul said, for the good that I would, I do if not. And the evil I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Who shall deliver me? Who going to help me? Who going to get me out of this fix? Who gonna bless me? Father, we're coming to you today. We don't come with pride or arrogance. We don't come boasting. We come humble, Lord. We know that there is no reason you should even be hearing us. But because your son died on the cross for our sins, Lord, we have the right to come before you for the price was already paid. We just want to be in alignment with you, Daddy. No more fighting you. No more rushing you. No more questioning you. I surrender all. All to you I owe. Yes. Now, we love you, Lord. I believe that everyone that has come, Lord, I believe you're going to do something great. May they receive it. 
but they stop beating themselves up, but they stop worrying, yes, and maybe they just accept this is the blessed life that you have for them. And may they, Lord, not only enter to learn, to get what you have for us to get, but may we depart, Lord, to serve our brothers and sisters and to share with them what you did for us and through us so that they will know you can do it through them. Lord, make every crooked place straight and every rough place smooth. And whatever has been broken here, mend it, Father. Put it back together again so you don't even see where it was sold together, Lord, where it was brought back, Lord. Please, relationships that are here, Father. Ideas that are here, Father. Goals that are here, Father. Everything that is in front of you, bless 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 and when you do because there's no doubt you will we will not take the credit for it but we will let the Lord we will let the world know it was the Lord himself that brought us through so again we praise you we worship you we honor you we adore you we lift you up we magnify your name and let the believers now say with me amen 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 come on give God a hand clap of praise Come on, give God a hand. Come on. Don't pity pat God. I want you to a blessing like you know you already won. Bless him like you already got the victory. Don't wait to praise him. Praise him in advance. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor TJ Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.